complete sense of humour. That's probably where I get it from. And in her 80s, there was one joke she said that really resonated with me. Um, there's an old couple, both in her 80s, she could say that because she was in her 80s. They were in bed one night. And uh, the guy, Wilfred, says to Agnes, I'm, I found someone else. I want a divorce. <laughs> why why, why do I do that? Well, I found someone who has some mutual interest with me. Okay. Well, what, what does she do that I don't do? She holds my wedding. But I hold your wedding. Ah, but she's got Parkinson's. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's quite ironic that then years later, that I eventually find that I have a human myself. My symptoms were that the right arm didn't swing, and uh, it was quite, quite, quite right. The writing <coughs> deteriorated, and uh, I hate writing now. Um, typing, my left hand is positive, my right hand is negative, so it doesn't actually, there's a constant battle for, for typing. Um, I, was, I was in, uh, when I was diagnosed, I was in Asia, I've been in Singapore, I've been in, in Asia. And uh, of course, chopsticks and people don't believe in things. That's the one thing I found very hard to do. And when I said that, some of the Chinese people said they had to say it wasn't as well. When I was walking, I used to drag my right my left right foot, and it's all in my right side. I stumbled in my left, used to trip up. A balance seemed to be affected. Um, and swimming, ironically, because I was a, a swimmer, my right arm was fine, but my left right, right leg. And then looking back, there's the elements of depression and then there's apathy. And that had been going on for quite a long time, well before I even knew really talking about Parkinson's. It was thrown in. I knew something wasn't, wasn't particularly right. But it took a long time, and uh, being a typical man, I put it off and I get getting mad and you, know, you should go and get a check. So I went to one of these health checks, uh, which were organised in Malaysia, and I sort of tagged on. Uh, to go and see a neurologist because it you know, made me think it was a stroke. So something, whatever it was, is it's connecting with the brain. So uh, I went in to uh, have the, the appointment and um, I walked in. I was told to walk up and down a few times and then a lovely medical doctor, Uli, who was uh, very typically Chinese, said, yes, you've got Parkinson's. Oh, uh, really? But in many ways, it was a bit of relief because it actually meant that I knew what was starting to go wrong. So you might actually relate to that. And the diagnosis, as you can see on the screen, the rigidity, is very, very delicious. So I don't actually shake, well, interestingly, the nerves today. I can find my, my right hand is actually shaking a little bit. Um, my right arm was reduced to the reduced to the My right side was brought to the and it, it took quite a while because suddenly, you know, if you've got Parkinson, what does that mean? How is it going to deteriorate over, over a period of time? And it took a bit of time to get it all um, to, uh, to come, come through to start to get to terms with it. But then the thought, then you start with the logical side of the brain. My, my background is in motorsport. Um, and uh, there's a bit of a this because what happened in the past, you can't change the past. You can only change the future and you can live in the now. So the logical part of my brain started to get in. And the one thing that Parkinson isn't, it's not really life threatening. You know, you die of other things because it could, my view was, it could be an awful lot worse. And just to give you two examples, a very good dear friend of mine was um, Peter Stainer. He was working with me, worked with him at McLaren. He got lost all over the world. And uh, he, he was very good. And you can see, with the two tightly different hands in the back there, you know, I had the Deirdre, Deirdre Barlow glasses and the moustache there, and Peter had the state of living style moustache, and uh, we were in the times of the air to the centre. But then, um, what happened with Peter is that uh, when he was in Singapore, he, the last time he came to one of the races, you know, just his speech was a little bit slurred. He thought, oh, maybe he's had a drink. You know, he didn't have a drink or infection. He was diagnosed with motor neurons disease. In two years, he died. So things could go up worse. The other, the other one is one of my oldest dearest friends. He's Roger Pedro. 
we were the same age, she was young enough to become a racing driver, and we always knew that he was either going to be hugely successful or he was going to have an accident. Well, unfortunately, the World Bowl testing, he had an accident, he broke his neck, and he was um, in a permanent state. But, again, it's that racing driver mentality. When you've got something wrong with you, you know, like most of them are trying to commit suicide, they realise they can't, they can't actually really break you up. And then you just get on with it. And we, we came up with some dark ideas. So the top picture there was that Mark Thatcher uh, flagged us off. We pushed the hospital bed all the way from uh, Brands, uh, Westminster to Brands Hatch. And we raised £14,000 for it. But the, the point I wanted to make is his determination for racing was so focused on, on other things. So that painting, which is absolutely in my bedroom, is well, set with the Royal College of Art. And he paints really with his mouth. But it's, it's that, de that determination and that, you know, what that good life goes on, or whatever it is, you can get going. So, come, let's say, coming to Durham to Parkinson, it's not a dead sentence. When I was diagnosed, I thought, well, it's only to come and start coming home. I had a great time in, in Asia, I really enjoyed it. But it was, it's time to come back, come to come home, come to come, to come to the family. And I think one, what you really noticed is the importance of family and home. Uh, got used to italics it, real friends. You certainly never get to know who your real friends are, you know. And that, that, that's something you very much treasure. And um, and you only have to do exercise. I was already starting to do exercise uh, in, in the gym in Malaysia. But I wanted to look for location. My criteria was I wanted to live somewhere I've never lived before, within reasonable reach of where my children were children that lived very near me in their thirties. Um, and someone near the coast. So I eventually, I think a property finds you, and an area finds you, rather than you that. I didn't know an area. And um, one of my salvations is you can walk along the beach, you can do exercise, and water and things like that give it much more resonance. So it's, it's, it's creating serenity with the water, I've always liked that sort of thing. It calms you down, and it puts all your things back in, life back in perspective. I think. And the other importance is exercise, the breaking around that area, it's all flat, so if you're cycling, you haven't got to go up too many hills. But um, I don't know if, if, if more, any of you have read the Michael J. Fox book, it's certainly worth reading, and it's different, and he was diagnosed at a much earlier age. But the serenity prayer, I think, really puts life into perspective, you know, uh, accept the things that cannot change, courage to change the things that can, and wisdom to know the difference. You can also use that with all the ongoing debate about Brexit because we can't. It, 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 don't let the politicians go and get on with it. There's nothing you can do about it. So, but it's, it's just putting life again back, I found, put life back in perspective. The negatives, uh, there are a few. I find it a bit slower, a bit of slowness. Uh, and Anxiety, I think that's one of the other things. You find it is sometimes you get worried about things you didn't know. Uh, I mean, when you look at it logically, the logical side of your brain, say, why am I getting so wound up about this? But it, it does tend to do it. Um, memory, maybe that, that affects it. But the interesting thing, it's the, the not the physical aspects, it's the non-physical aspects that make a difference. But I always remember, the bad days can, can and will pass. And the, the term black dog, I don't know if you know, I don't know, found this out at Churchill, that certainly during the war, he sat with depression and he used to call it the black dog. But instead, change the image. We've got the image of this big black dog that's dominating, so when we get a depressed mood. Now instead, instead of the image, try and adjust and change the dimension from black dog into a big chocolate Labrador <laughs> who is so pleased to see you. He's wagging his tail and he um, gets so excited he sort of pees on your feet at the same time. <laughs> It's just, it's just the mental image of changing one thing to another, to changing the negative, potential negative to a positive. That was uh, my son, or he's my son's dog, and we all of those things. And it was my daughter that came up with the, 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 the comparison, but um, he gets very, very excited. This, um, there are lots of, you, know, you can Google all sorts of uh, things, and you know, a lot of it is positive on the website, and of it's not, some of it is not. But I, I can thoroughly recommend uh, this lady, Joan Hamilton. Um, it's, it's all about the Parkinson's you don't see, the cognitive and non-motor symptoms. And she's put a whole list of things that 
could actually help, you know, reduce the stress to thinking and, and remove it. Schedule store short naps, and I find, you, know, you think these days with an iPhone, you know, your, your phone doesn't last, the battery doesn't last very long, so you need to recharge it. But I, I tend to find I get like that, my body needs a break. You've got to listen to your body, one of the most important things. So then you have a short nap, and then you, you can recharge it better. Limit the distractions, memory aids. You know, I've never been terribly good at remembering names, whatever, it never gets worse. It's probably why we all the ladies are called darling, because it's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, minimise a lot of the things that, that actually cause stress. Um, you know, the voice, like I'm conscious of my voice is not what it used to be. But, uh, you know, it's a bit of a bit frame because I used to stand up, I used to do lots of presentations. But again, mm -hmm. things that can be done. Depression is a treatable condition. Um, and, you know, working with the partners, don't then dwell on the memory lapses, coach, and be sensitive. But one of the things that really comes across is you're not crazy, you're not lazy, you just got Parkinson's and accept it for what it actually, actually is and just put life back in and the positives, well, this is, you know, it changes your outlook on life, I think, quite, quite a lot. You know, forever. And I, it, it, it's hard to do this, but I have started to think, I have to think, Parkinson's is a gift. Why has it been given to me? As opposed to thinking, why me? Why am I suffering from it? Now, well, what, is, what opportunities is this going to open up? And um, I think it, it, it restores a lot of faith, it increases the friendships and the values of feeling real people and real friends. As to the artificial things in life. Now, challenge your comfort zone. I think that's the other bit. Now, that, that gentleman I'm with up there is, was one of my teachers when I went into first and in, in secondary school. He's now in his 80s and he's a regular driver. He'd be, so he'd come up and do a school up. So I'd done four dives. At that stage, he'd done 1,166 dives and he started when he was in his 60s. So well, the point is that if you've got the back of try and do something for someone doing simple stretching. I've got something I'll tell you a little bit later about that. But the challenge is actually up to you and to be ready to challenge yourself. It doesn't have to be a big challenge, but just something to, to improve the, the, whatever you're doing. Now Ed and Senna once would, 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 was training or whatever, would always want to beat. So if you've done 50 press-ups, you want to do 55 press-ups. Or if you've done something in 1 minute 10, you want to do it in 1 minute 5. So he's constantly challenging his perception. And that's what I think can help keep us on our toes. Medication. Now, I've resisted medication for a long time. And I, I think probably for many of you, you go through the second year. Then, again, reading Dr. Google, you can see so many different side effects about what it is, how many drugs you take, and all the other things. I was, uh, I resisted it for a long, long time. And then I started, and then the condition got slightly worse. And I thought, actually, I want to get my life back. I was actually missing out. And the doctor was, was trying to convince me to use medication for a long time. But I, at the time, I thought that it was right. I've been um, using Rokinol since September 2018. I'm currently on 10 milligrams. And actually, I can feel the effects on my body that I've just asked to try and increase it because you can just feel the effects. But the important thing is, is to get to know your body. You know, you, you, you're the best, in many ways, you're the best judge if you're honest. If you feel you know, to get to know your body and listen to your body more than anything. I haven't really experienced any in the side effects, so I found that work. I only take two, one tablet effectively a day. Uh, that is, is great for me because I can remember that. I've got to take three or four now. I'm probably get confused about what I'm actually doing. The important thing is to con concentrate on wellness. And uh, my partner in crime, Dan King. Uh, <laughs> Thank been, you very much. <laughs> uh, you know, various, various exercises that we actually do. I, when I was in Malaysia, we used acupuncture, I used traditional Chinese medicine. I never could get on the Chinese tea, it was tasted and disgusting. Um, you know, diet, you know, look at the diet, look at the, the, the talk about you know, how important the, the benefits of the gut and that sort of thing. But what do you think about it? You know, if you go and buy a house and you've got four houses and they've all got four bedrooms and you've got to make a choice of where it is. It's not, not, in the end, it's not your brain that tells you, it's your gut. It's, it, it, it's your instinct, whatever. You realise that how important the guy actually is to give a reaction. Whether you meet someone, whether you like them or whether you don't like them, 
it's actually in many ways a gut reaction. You intellectualize it afterwards, but it's the gut reaction that actually does it. Um, I find walking, you know, I, I use the iPhone in my pocket and I try and do 10,000 steps and it doesn't always work, but walking a lot and that's why I live in, in, near the sea, you can be on the walking, that helps. Cycling again is good, and swimming. Um, but then, and then there's P.D. Gorey. Now, you'll know, know more about P.D. Gorey. When I, when I first started, I think, well, what's the big deal? Why, why is, why is it, well, I've got to do this exercise and do a penguin and all sorts of things like that? You think, but how's this going to work? That's when you're doing it at about 50% effort. When you do it at 80 plus effort, it suddenly transforms you. And you actually see the benefits of where it actually comes through. And this, this quote, this is not for my daughter. Now, I hadn't seen her for a couple of weeks. She <coughs> was in the uh, And I hadn't seen her. And I opened the door, and this is after I'd been in a couple of the exercises, and she was just so amazed at the difference that it actually had made. You know. Suddenly there was a spark, there was an energy. You were also so drained, you know, and it didn't feel so old, and all that, that sort of thing. Uh, and I, and the buzz. And I, I can recommend it. Now, I really is, and he does a fantastic job in, in doing it. And we have fun, that's the most important thing. And fun, make it light hearted. Yeah, everyone's got a different, well, different journey. Before I, before I came here, I'd only met one person who had Parkinson's, and he was a marathon. So it was it, 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 interesting to, to swap stories and to talk about it and to. To, to, to make the most, and you can learn so much off of, of, of individual different, different people and such. So, what well, we're learning to dance in the rain, what that comes that comes the inspiration. It's not about waiting for the storm to pass, it's about learning to dance in the rain. And we were looking for different ways and methods and and to have to explain what we're trying to do. This is, this is to complement what happens with the meditation, and the meditation depends very much on your own. What you're going to do. But there's more that you can do to improve the wellness of whatever. Now don't you know, challenge it instead. Try and make a positive attitude. Maybe a, if you read, you know, for a start, stop reading too many newspapers. Don't read too much of the daily mail. Don't listen to BBC news or broadcast too much. Because it all dwells on negative. We've got negative perceptions. <laughs> Try and think of more of positive aspects of life. I personally now got to the point where I try and distance start myself from anyone who's in the negative. I haven't got time for it now. I want to do it in a, in a positive environment. So it's a start, and you will get, there's another presentation a bit later, Start Living Today with PD, which is um, by a lady called Heidi, who's got her own website. But, and we worked in collaboration with her, but it's positive, motivated, and happy. That's what we want to be smiling with. Now I know that. Uh, it can affect your face, whatever. Uh, but the important thing I think is smile in the mirror in the morning because they say that there's, less, there's more muscles in a scowl than there is in a smile. So make friends with yourself. Look at the smile in the mirror, in the mirror and just think of the, the positives in life. Now, you know, I'm conscious that one day the condition is going to get worse. You know, it, it's never more. It's not, not being sentimental about it, it's actually preparing very much for me. So, to me, it's the most important to make the most of everything while I can. And uh, I'm very privileged to just go to the rain water. And, uh, and it gives you added impetus to, 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 to and then ongoing motivation. So, yeah, and I'm walking. Now, the picture in the middle is quite interesting. 50 years ago, a bunch of 12 year old boys swam the English Channel over tea and established a world record, and that record is held you know, for about 40 odd years. And that is the, those, those are the various char characters, including myself, who actually swam. Now I made the mistake of telling Vicky all about this. <laughs> and so, she issued, she issued a challenge. So next year, we're going to swim from Gosport to Ride. <coughs> it's out here. Put it in perspective, it's only, it's, it's only <laughs> three and a half miles, and it's only 5,000 5, metres and stuff. But it's, it's something, and that's the challenge we want to do. So, if anyone would like to join us, we'll become involved in it. We've we, 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 we just got this daft idea at the moment. I've got nothing more than that. But that's what we're, we're going to do, and that's going to be our challenge for next week. Who's in the world? I just don't like cold water. 
<laughs> it tells me that now. <laughs> well, you can always, you can wear wetsuit. If you're doing if you're doing the channel, swim the channel. You've got to if you're swimming on your own, you've got to demonstrate.